In a terminal with so much space, there's no shortage of room for retail therapy. But the size of this building posed another problem for the airport engineers. Remember those typhoons? These severe tropical storms have their own internationally recognized scale of destruction. At the top of the scale, category five, wind speeds can escalate to 250 kilometers an hour. These typhoons wreak havoc in Hong Kong, sending everyone running for cover. Hurricane force winds also cause problems for big buildings with high, flat sides. Uh, exactly like this one, then. To protect Hong Kong's new airport from destruction, engineers looked to another type of transport and found the answer in a 1930s racing car. Engineers knew the solution had to be strong enough to keep the building together, but just how strong did it have to be? Thinking about the kinds of pressures these buildings have to stand up to, and we could look at the numbers all day long, but how do they actually feel what happens? Well, to find out about that, I've come to the one place where I can be in control of the weather. A wind tunnel. A really, really big wind tunnel. I've asked engineer David Wayne to let me play in his expensive wind tunnel. Dave, so what's the fastest wind this tunnel can generate? 130 kph, 80 mile per hour. So that's about hurricane strength, isn't it? It is, yes. And you're prepared to fire it up and let me stand there. I just want to feel what that feels like. Yeah, if you're quite happy to do that, then yes. Why are you smiling like that? <laughs> will, will, it, will it blow me over at that speed? It is quite likely to, yes. Right. If you're not bracing yourself, if you're not expecting it, then yes, it will knock you over. Right. Will it then blow me to the other end of the wind tunnel where I'll come out like chips? No, hopefully okay. not. Good. Once once you're on the floor, then that's it. You right. shouldn't go any further. OK. OK, well, this is, this is just about feeling, feeling that pressure that these buildings have to put up with, so in the name of science, switch it on. I'll stand over here. <laughs> do is just get a real physical feeling of the kind of forces in a typhoon. I mean, how windy is a typhoon? 130 kilometres, 80 miles an hour. I mean, it's breezy, but how windy is it, really? And why have they put a mattress strapped to the floor immediately behind me? OK, that's breezy. David signals the wind speeds already up to 40 kilometres an hour. kilometers an hour. That's gale force strength. I'm just feeling the pressure. I mean, I'm feeling that on me now. That's as a bloke. Not a big bloke at that. If I was a whole building, imagine the pressure's on me just at this speed. David cranks it up to 100 kilometers an hour. Probably as well that I don't wear a toupee. It's not long before we're hitting 112 kilometers an hour. One hundred and thirty kilometers an hour, this wind tunnel's top speed. This is equivalent to a category one typhoon. Just imagine a category five, almost double this speed. I think I made a point. Yeah. Well, sometimes numbers, theories aren't enough. And you just got to experience something physically for yourself. And all I learned there was wind, moving air can be very, very powerful stuff, even when you're just a small bloke. If I was the side of a huge building, the pressures would be incredible. The walls were reinforced to cope with the immense loads. Unfortunately for the engineers, strong winds stress the roof in a different way. 
every aeroplane using this airport relies on one thing to get into the skies, lift. And one of the secrets to creating that lift lies in air moving quickly across a surface. That terminal roof is a very big surface. Add in some fast moving air and there's the potential for a very, very big problem. Back at the wind tunnel, I'm going to find out what happens to a curved roof when it's hit by a typhoon strength wind. I have here a small building. Well, it's very small, but I have more to the point over here, a roof. And it's got a profile a bit like the one at Hong Kong. And I kind of, I understand the theory is that because of this shape, it'll work like an aircraft wing and that'll generate lift and it'll be lifted up off the building. But I kind of need to feel that happening for myself. So I've got the roof, I've got the building, I've got the wind tunnel to make the wind going over the top. I feel an experiment coming on. I've got to get in the small building. Okay. I'm in. I mean, it's basic, but it's home. Right, I need my roof now, please. And we can, I can find out just how it feels. Right. Ah, yes, one important feature. This is quite an expensive facility we're in, so just in case it does lift the roof off, I'm chaining it in place so it can't fly through the expensive fans at the end of the wind tunnel. Right, one of those. All done. OK. Remember, this wind tunnel can reach wind speeds of a Category 1 typhoon, 130 kilometres an hour. Let's see if that's enough for this roof to fly. Well, I think you can see how the wind curves its way over the roof. But as yet, that isn't resulting in any lift. 40 kilometres an hour and rising. Now it's getting windier. My roof's still on. This whole wall is vibrating as the wind's hitting it face on. Woo! Something happened there. Some movement from the roof. I'm not doing any of this. It's just happening. Whoa, 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 whoa! All of a sudden! That's not me! That's my roof! And just over 55 kilometres an hour, this roof takes off. My building is in a terrible state! It's broken the chains! You can just feel the lift. It passes a critical point and then, voila! The roof just wants to take off. It feels like a wing. Well, the big bad wolf didn't get in, but what I could feel then was the two stresses facing a building in a strong wind. Because initially, there's the wind just hitting the side of it there, and it wants to just collapse the building that way. And then suddenly, when the wind grew and grew and grew, there came a point when the roof was at peril. And it wasn't that it was just being blown that way. It was actually being lifted up. So that's two very distinct and separate stresses on a building. One, this way, collapsing the walls, and the other, lifting the roof off. That's a problem. One way to hold a flyaway roof is to lock it down tight. But this would call for a beefy building, precisely what the architects didn't want. The airport engineers came up with a better idea, and the key was flexibility, thanks to a pioneering joint from a 1930s racing car. There it is. That is a Silver Arrow, a 1930s Mercedes racing car. And it featured a revolutionary new form of suspension that Mercedes had been pioneering. Probably one of the things that helped it dominate the 1937 Grand Prix season. But no sooner had that suspension been pioneered than it cascaded down from racing cars like that to more ordinary everyday cars. And you can still see it in use today. And there it is. It's a wishbone. A wishbone is a triangle of strengthened steel. It only allows movement up and down, stopping the wheels from moving in any other direction. The car's wishbone inspired airport designers to join the roof and walls, making a flexible joint, allowing for movement during typhoons. 
But unlike the car's wishbone, airport engineers had to design for three movements, not just one. The roof lifts like an aircraft wing, so the wishbone allows for up and down movement. But wind blasting the glass walls translates into a sideways movement, so it also has a sliding mechanism. For even greater flexibility, a knuckle bearing links the wishbone to the sliding bar. A total of 1,300 wishbones allow the building to flex and move in typhoon winds, thanks to a vintage racing car.